Saturn became moon? Shocking news! Latest image goes viral. This is insane. Saturn will become just like our moon. Yes, you heard it right. Saturn is slowly losing its ring, which means all those rocks will shrink inside Saturn and will make a surface inside Saturn. But how much time does Saturn have? After a few billion years, Saturn will look like our moon. I know it sounds very strange and unreal, but this is the truth about this gas giant. Want to know more? Hello, intellectuals! Welcome back to Next Tech Ventures, where today's video is going to be a bomb, just like the supernova. So make sure to watch the video till the end. So without any further ado, let's begin! Research carried out by NASA indicates that Saturn is shedding its rings at a worst-case scenario rate. The most recent findings from NASA indicate that the distinctive rings of Saturn are disintegrating at the maximum rate expected from observations taken by the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft decades ago. Under the influence of Saturn's magnetic field, the rings are disintegrating into a dusty rain of ice particles as a result of Saturn's gravity pulling them inward. We estimate that this ring rain drains a number of water products from Saturn's rings that could fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool in a half an hour, said James O'Donohue of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. If you add this to the fact that the Cassini probe has identified a debris from Saturn's rings falling into the planet's equator, the rings have a lifespan of fewer than 100 million years at most. Based on this alone, the entire ring system will be gone in 300 million years. When compared to Saturn's age of almost 4 billion years, this is a very short period of time. In the article Saturn's Ring Rain that will be published on Icarus on December 17th, O'Donohue is the primary author. For a very long time, researchers have pondered whether or not Saturn was born with its rings, or whether or not the planet acquired them at a later time. According to the findings of the recent study, the second possibility is more likely to be accurate. This suggests that they are unlikely to be older than 100 million years, given that it would have taken that amount of time for the C ring to evolve into what it is today, presuming that it was once as dense as the B ring. We are extremely fortunate to be alive at this moment to witness Saturn's ring system, which seems to be in the midst of its lifetime. If rings are merely ephemeral, though, it's possible that we only missed out on seeing the massive ring systems that Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune had in the past, even though these planets only have tiny ringlets now, O'Donohue added. There have been many different explanations put out for where the ring came from. Rings could have formed when small, icy moons in orbit around Saturn collided with one another, possibly due to their orbits being disrupted by the gravitational pull of a passing asteroid or comet. This would be the case if the planet acquired the rings later in its life. The first hints that ring rain existed came from observations made by the Voyager spacecraft of three phenomena that appeared to have no connection with one another. Peculiar variations in Saturn's electrically charged upper atmosphere, or ionosphere, density variations in Saturn's rings, and a trio of narrow dark bands encircling the planet at northern mid-latitudes. All three of these phenomena were observed by Voyager. In 1981, during the Voyager 2 mission, NASA captured photographs of Saturn's hazy upper atmosphere, that's the stratosphere, revealing these black bands' presence. In 1986, Jack Connerney of NASA Goddard published a paper in Geophysical Research Letters that linked those narrow dark bands to the shape of Saturn's enormous magnetic field. In the paper, Connerney proposed that electrically charged ice particles from Saturn's rings were flowing down invisible magnetic field lines, dumping water in Saturn's upper atmosphere, where these lines emerged from the planet. Connerney's research was published in support of the hypothesis that electrically charged ice particles from Saturn's rings were flowing down invisible. The influx of water from the rings, which appeared at precise latitudes, washed away the stratospheric haze, which caused it to look dark in reflected light, and led to the production of the narrow dark bands that were documented in the photographs by the Voyager spacecraft. The majority of Saturn's rings are composed of fragments of water ice that ranges in size from extremely minute dust grains to boulders that are several yards or meters broad. Ring particles are locked in a precarious balancing act between the pull of Saturn's gravity, which wants to draw them back into the planet, and the velocity of their orbit, which wants to blast them outward into space. Saturn's gravity wants to pull them back into the planet. Tiny particles have the potential to become electrically charged if they are exposed to UV radiation from the sun, or if plasma clouds are produced as a result of the micrometeoroid bombardment of the rings. 
When this takes place, the particles are able to sense the pull of Saturn's magnetic field, which is curved inward toward the planet where the rings meet Saturn. Once charged, certain regions of the rings experience a dramatic shift in the equilibrium of the forces acting on these extremely small particles. As a result, Saturn's gravity is able to drag these particles along the magnetic held lines and deposit them in the upper atmosphere. When they reach that point, the icy ring particles evaporate and the water is in a position to chemically react with Saturn's ionosphere. These reactions have a number of consequences, one of which is an extension of the lifetime of electrically charged particles known as H3 plus ions. These ions are composed of three protons and two electrons. O'Donohue's team used specialized instruments that were affixed to the Keck telescope in Mauna Kea, Hawaii, in order to study the infrared light that was emitted by the H3 plus ions when they were energized by sunlight and glowing. The researchers' observations revealed luminous bands in Saturn's northern and southern hemispheres, which were located at the points where magnetic field lines that intersected the ring plane entered the planet. Through the examination of the light, they were able to ascertain the quantity of precipitation that originated from the ring, as well as the impact that it had on Saturn's ionosphere. They discovered the amount of rain corresponds amazingly well with the astonishingly high estimates derived more than three decades earlier by Connerney and colleagues, with one region in the south receiving the majority of it. In addition, the group found a bright ring at a further southerly latitude in the southern hemisphere. This is the point in which the magnetic field of Saturn intersects the orbit of Enceladus, a geologically active moon that is spewing geysers of water ice into space, which indicates that some of these particles are raining onto Saturn as well. Cotterney stated that he did not find that to be an entirely shocking revelation. Based on the presence of yet another thin black band in the previously mentioned Vintage Voyager image, we were able to ascertain that Enceladus and its E-ring are abundant reservoirs of liquid water. The geysers, which were initially spotted by Cassini instruments in 2005, are believed to be emanating from an ocean of liquid water that lies beneath the frozen surface of the little moon. Enceladus is an exceptionally fruitful location for the hunt for extraterrestrial life due to the geological activity that occurs there, as well as the presence of an ocean of water. NASA and the NASA postdoctoral program at NASA Goddard provided funding for the research and the University Space Research Association served as the program's administrator. The W.M. Keck Observatory is run as a scientific partnership by the California Institute of Technology, the University of California, and NASA, and the data from the observatory can be retrieved from the Keck archive in the form of its files. The authors would like to acknowledge the great cultural function and veneration that the summit of Mauna Kea has among the community of indigenous Hawaiians, they consider themselves extremely lucky to have the opportunity to perform observations from this mountain. And that brings us to the end of our video. Feel free to let us know what you thought about it. And if you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.